Om Shri Sai Ram. I am Sai Shravanam. I am an active member of the Sundaram Bhajan group. By profession, uh, I am a sound engineer and I am also a tabla player, a musician, a composer and I am also into music direction. My life and my career has been completely carved out and sculpted by Bhagwan Sri Sati Sai Baba. Coming from a family who has been devotees of Sai Baba, have been nurtured in Balvikas and my active participation in Sati Sai organization. It was during my post graduation that I was, uh, since I am totally into music, I always wanted to do music and I never wanted to study computer science. So there was an occasion where I was performing the tabla in front of Bhagwan and I took opportunity to tell Swami, Swami, I want to be in music and I do not want to study. Swami smiled at me and Swami said, uh, you know, study, socially people will respect you, finish your studies and I will tell you what to do. So I finished my studies, I did my post graduation in computer science and I was working with the Indian Institute of Technology. And uh, one fine day in Kodaikanala, it's, it was many years that I was starting to work in computer science and I could not pursue music. One day in Kodaikanala, Swami called me for an interview and uh, Swami did not give me a chance to speak. Swami said, uh, you are not happy with your job and daily you go back home and you are very upset. You tell your mother not to watch TV because it is very noisy and you do not seem to be a happy son. I said, uh, Swami, no, nothing like that. Swami said, mother is so important, you have to take care of her. So what, what job are you doing? I said, Swami, I am into basically speech and voice synthesis in the Indian Institute of Technology in Chennai. And Swami said, okay, I will tell you what to do. And Swami said, go and wait outside. And that was all. It was one and a half years of wait and I resigned from my job in Indian Institute of Technology. And uh, I came out and it was for one year I was going up and down in Puttaparthi trying to see if Swami would tell me what job I would do. I could not get into full-fledged music because I did not know if I had to continue my career in computer science. And one day Swami had called my mother and he asked, what is your son doing? Swami, he is waiting for instruction. For my instruction, for what? Swami, uh, he loves music and okay, ask him to come and see me. And I went to Puttaparthi. Swami said, do a business, start something, make, make it a small business, take care of your mother, mother is very important. What do you like? I said, Swami, music and I would like to have a studio. Swami said, start said, uh, Swami, I do not have the money to start it. Swami said, no, you do not have the faith to start it. I do not know what to reply to Swami. And then Swami said, uh, your faith is like a pendulum going left and right. And then he said, yes, no, will I be able to start a business? No, will I be in music? Will I be able to earn? Am I going to be in computer science? Am I going to be in music? Swami said, I am right in front of you. He said, stick your faith to yes, I can do it. And time will wait for you. Time will not move in a pendulum. In a, in a time piece, you know, when the pendulum keeps sticking, the time keeps moving. And when you stick the faith to, yes, I can do it, the time will wait for you. And that was the case with me. I had nothing to start with. I had to seek the help of my father, who was very gracious. And he said, okay, go ahead to start something on your own. I started as a very small audio recording suit uh, in Chennai, in my house, as per Swami's instruction above my house. We did not have a first floor at that time, it was a very small house. So I started this studio and while I was about to finish it, that was the time Swami had come to Chennai. And I had the chance to serve as a sevadal and I was basically cleaning vessels and other things, which is a part of seva activities in Sundram and Swam where Swami was staying. And one day Swami called me and he asked me, what is your name? What do you do? What job do you do? what is your salary? And with me were other brothers who were telling company names with uh, skyrocketing salaries. And I knew that question when it pounds to me, I did not know what to answer. I was silent. Swami said, tell me what is your salary? Swami, I do not have any salary as of now. Swami said, what work are you doing? <coughs> I said, uh, I am just starting up music business and I am um, doing a studio with your instructions. Swami playfully laughed at me and Swami was like, Oh, with my instructions? What did I tell you? I said, Swami, you have guided me and you have asked me to start my own business. And Swami said, see, faith, if you have faith, 
you can do what you want. Swami said, where is your business? I said, it's in my house as per your instruction. How far is your house? I said, Swami, it's about 10 minutes from here. Then Swami said, tell your mother tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I'm coming there. And Swami said, I will inaugurate your business. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to do. It was a very small place. I didn't know if it was fit enough for Bhagwan to come and start it. And the next day at sharp 10, Swami's car came. He came into my house. And then uh, there's a ramp that I've done for my studio. This not, usually in India we have staircases or we have elevators, but it's very rare to find, only in hospitals you can find ramps. I decided to do a ramp because as a musician, if I carry my instruments, it is very difficult in a staircase, especially with two backs. And so I decided I'll do a ramp. As Swami was coming, Swami came in and the first thing he asked me was, where's your business? I said, Swami, my studio is upstairs. Swami said, I'll come up. So he didn't come down. He came up the ramp. And then as he was coming up the ramp, very softly he asked me, Edik ramp in Tamil, which means, why is this ramp? I said, Swami, for musicians and old people, it will be very helpful and it's very easy to carry music instruments. Swami said, no, no, no. I decided to come here many years back. And it is my will and wish that I come here and now Swami can't walk. My wheelchair has to come. So it is, I have put the ramp for myself and Swami gave a very beautiful smile and he came straight into the studio. I had a small lamp and Swami lit the lamp and Swami was seeing all the acoustics and the speakers and the monitors and everything. And Swami was asking me, what is this, what is this, what is that? And, and then uh, Swami told me, music is one language that does not have barriers. Music can grow across boundaries, across countries, across continents. And Swami said, it's like, they are like birds, you know, they can just fly past the boundary and see. So he said, music is one language that you should take through the world. And Swami said, music business will have profit, music business will have loss, there will be up and there will be down. But you must have constant faith and you must work with duty, devotion and discipline completely. And Swami said, you do it with faith and have me with you, I am on, I'm your only partner. Rest, I will take care. And again, he repeated, take care of your mother, take care of your mother. And then he saw my mother and he said, Amma, I'm going to have food in your house. So bring some food. So we had to rush everything, whatever we had prepared. We didn't specifically make anything for Swami, but whatever my mother made, we had kept it. Swami was eating. And at that moment was when he asked me, what is your name? I said, Swami, my name is Shravanam. Shravanam means to hear. Swami said, do you know the meaning? I said, yes, Swami, Shravanam means to hear. Swami said, I named you Shravanam. When I was, my parents, uh, in short, my parents didn't give me a name until I was four and a half years old because my mother's faith was Satya Sai Baba must name my son. So she waited four and a half uh, years. And when I was in school, my name was just Sai because my parents decided not to name me until Swami names me. So Swami named me Shravanam. So Swami then asked me, do you know what Shravanam means? I said, yes, Shravanam means to hear, to listen. Swami said, music is to hear. Sound is to hear. Music and sound and what you're going to do is all Shravanam. So your life is revolving around your name, which is Shravanam. And after 30 years of my life, I realized when I was born, Swami knew what I was doing and he named me Shravanam. And my, today, my whole life, whether it's my peace, whether it's my earning, whether it's my passion or my profession, everything is sound, music and Shravana. And then he saw my mother and he said, get your son married immediately. I told Swami, I don't have any salary. I'm just starting up my business. Swami is like, why are you so worried about salary? Marriage has nothing to do with uh, uh, salary. And then Swami said, get married. And he saw my mother and he said, don't worry. Your son is just working above your house. So any time you call him Sai, he'll come down and he'll be there for you, no matter what. So see how comfortable everything is. And my mother was like, yes. And Swami said, no, get him married, a daughter-in-law will come. And the daughter-in-law will not just take care of you, but she will feed food for you. She will feed you with, with her hands. 
My mother said, Swami, if daughter-in-law comes, I will keep her like a daughter. I will not keep her like a daughter-in-law. So, uh, Swami just gave a smile and he said, rest well, rest well, rest well. As he was going out, Swami said, take care of your mother. That is very important. You take care of your mother, rest I will take care. I said, okay, Swami. And it was a very brief visit. Months later, my mother was diagnosed of a terminal disease, a brain cancer, a very rare geoblastoma. So, seemingly it comes one in one million cancer is a geoblastoma. So, uh, my mother was diagnosed of that. And uh, when I went to Swami and I said, Swami, this is it, Swami said, okay, you you have to take care of your mother is something which is very important and now your business is above your house if your mother calls you are there to help her now get married i said swami my marriage is in june he said no no prepone it prepone it do it in february and he gave the date and i got married just days before the marriage my mother got operated for brain cancer and later did we realize that his words are nothing but truth and uh, Swami subtly prepared us and our family. Unlike usually, we talk about miracles, about Swami, you know, being uh, Swami can cure any kind of cancer. But what more do you want than his love for us, his care for us, his being with us like a family member and a love that which is more than a million mothers that you can own. And then Swami said, see, and then I got married. Swami uh, blessed me for my marriage and from the day of my marriage, from the first day of my marriage, because of the operation that my mother underwent, her hands were paralyzed, she couldn't eat by herself. So my wife had to come and feed her food with her hands, which Swami predicted a year back. And my mother was with us for a year and Swami took care of us immensely, immensely, every day, every single move. And then today, it's been three years since uh, I don't have my mother physically with me. But Swami has showered so much love that, you know, I feel the presence of my mother and Swami with us. And in my music business, I've completed about five years now. And it's been a slow and steady growth for me in my industry and today this studio which is Swami studio is regarded as one of India's premier recording studios for Indian classical music and I've been the the studio is known for its quality of work and also the fact that when Swami said music has to travel it doesn't have boundaries Indian music or music has to go to other parts of the world so you have to keep expanding very recently, I had the opportunity to work for the film The Life of Pi, which has been nominated for Oscar for the sound. And with Bhagwan's immense grace, I've been one of the sound recorders in the team. And uh, the nomination has brought us a lot of, it has given me a lot of confidence. And the words of Swami then, five years back, when I'm seeing it today growing and expanding, it's simply Swami's love. and. Here I would not like to mention about whether it's my business or Swami or what Swami guided, but it is very important that every one of us know that Swami is directly or indirectly guiding us and taking us through in our lives, whether it's business, whether it's family, whether it's health, whether it's our own inner conscience, no matter what, Bhagwan is with us and He will continue to be with us. There are cases where Swami, as I mentioned, has completely cured of cancer. In my mother's case, my mother had cancer. She was there, but Swami gave such quality life for our family. He gave us assurance that everything is fine. My mother didn't suffer a single day and anything and everything, Swami was there. So much of Swami's omnipresence. For example, if she had a seizure and I didn't know what to do and I didn't have food and I'm alone with my mother, I just receive a phone call saying, Sairam, this is a call from Puttaparthi. There is a message from Bhagwan saying that you have not had your food and that your mother is not well. That Swami is very concerned that you should have your food. So please go have food 
and Bhagwan is sitting right next to your mother. So don't worry if you leave her in the room. Go to the kitchen, have food, eat and call back and tell us that you have had food. Swami is waiting for your message. I have never experienced anything like that. I rushed to the kitchen. I don't remember what I swallowed and by the time I could wash hands, my mobile again rang and the message was, Swami is happy you have had food. So he didn't even give me a chance to call back and say, okay. And I, when I went back into the room, my mother who, who was suffering from seizures was happy sleeping with a smile on her face. And I went back and that was my very first personal experience of Swami's omnipresence. Not that he had to physically come here, it was not a dream, it was not a hallucination, it was a physical phone call that came saying you didn't eat. So here the point is not about his omnipresence or his powers. Why, if you see acutely into it, what's the amount of love he has for every human being? That every, uh, somebody must eat, mother is suffering, don't worry, Swami is sitting next to her, go eat. So the the depth of love that Swami goes in is beyond what we can perceive. So there are many, many, many facets that we can see Swami with. But my family has just understood one fundamental fact that we should never forget that Swami is with us. And no matter what, we may forget Him. He will never forget us and He is always with us. Sairam.